Who controls the past? Controls the future. Who controls the present? Controls the past. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat Al-Qaeda. All you gotta do is start looking around, start thinking for yourself, start investigating things, and you will see it all right there. So you have the power, humanity has the power, we have the power. Do you wanna fight? You better believe you got one! Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. As for me, give me liberty or give me death! The answer to 1984 is 1776. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. Today's date is Wednesday, June 26, 2013. I'm your host, Rob Dew. We're almost halfway through the year. In fact, we're more than halfway through the year. Here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, Michael Hastings' wife vows to take down whoever is responsible as Staff Sergeant Joseph Biggs reveals that Hastings was working on his biggest story yet about the CIA before his untimely death. You know how people are going to react to this. They're going to say that the, the tinfoil hat people think the government killed this journalist. Then, a former terrorist releases video testimony that says Al-Qaeda in Syria is being led by the CIA. Tell us something we don't know. And Kevin Booth talks to InfoWars about American Drug War II. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. We begin tonight with a couple stories from Paul Joseph Watson concerning the death of journalist Michael Hastings. Uh, the first one, this is from yesterday. Friend, Michael Hastings was working on the biggest story yet about CIA. And this comes out of revelations from his friend, Sergeant Joe Biggs, who Michael Hastings was embedded with when he was in Afghanistan in 2008. And Fox News had Michael, uh, Joe Biggs on to talk about uh, the releasing of an email that Michael sent out just hours before his car mysteriously blew up. It's interesting to note Mercedes has yet to come forward and say that uh, their cars are perfectly safe and, and no one needs to be worried about them spontaneously blowing up when you're driving through the streets of LA. Um, but uh, there's a couple things I want to go over. Uh, Big said he contacted Mercedes asking them if it was normal for their cars to blow up uh, to that extent and for the engine to fly 100 feet out from the side of the crash. He also confirmed that Hastings was working on a story about the CIA and said it was going to be the biggest story yet. Um, some other parts of this timeline, WikiLeaks reported that Hastings had contacted them in the hours before his death, complaining that he was under investigation for the FBI, uh, by the FBI. Cenk Unger from the Young Turks said he was incredibly tense and very worried. Uh, BuzzFeed editor Ben Smith added that Hastings had told friends and family he was very concerned that he was being under investigation and an anonymous source said he was very paranoid and that he's being watched by the FBI. His um, email, that he, his panicked email that, that Biggs released says, hey, the feds are interviewing my closest friends and associates. Also, onto a big story, need to go off the radar for a bit. So that was yesterday, and we're going to go to this clip. This is Sergeant Joe, B Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. Yesterday on Fox, Fox and Friends, I believe, with Megyn Kelly. Uh, well, what was he investigating, as far as you know, that would have caused any consternation whatsoever by someone? CIA, but from what he said, or his last, well, one of the things he said is it was going to be the biggest story yet. The, you know, you know how people are going to react to this. They're going to say that the, the tinfoil hat people think the government killed this journalist. Uh, by taking exactly. over his control, his car, doing something to his car. Auto driving. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> no hands anywhere. No hands, no feet. No hands, no feet. No nothing. <laughs> I love it. So we're here at the stop sign. Yep. Cars using radars and laser to, to check and make sure there's nothing coming. Wow. We tinfoil hat wears. We believe he'd be killed by the government. Megan Kelly, government mouthpiece, says tinfoil hat wears. Ask questions. 
Only people like me read from teleprompter. Here it is. Man, I tell you what, and then, you know, we put a little video in there with the Google car driving by itself. We had a caller actually in, uh, called in the Alex Jones show today who said back in 1999 when his mother was killed in a car crash, um, all the way over in Germany, they got a readout of how the uh, airbag deployed. And they had problems getting all this information out from the, from the company. I think one of the companies was Bosch who made the airbag uh, deploy algorithm and they couldn't get that from them. But back in 1999, they had this technology to get readouts from the cars through the little black boxes. So if you don't believe they can take control of your car right now, oh, maybe you need to put on tinfoil hat. Uh, man, it is just crazy out there. And on top of that, Paul Joseph Watson writes today, Michael Hastings' wife vows to take down whoever did this. Uh, wife of Rolling Stone journalist Michael Hastings has vowed to take down whoever did this, according to the man who released the email that we know is now Sergeant Joseph Biggs. Sergeant, Staff Sergeant Joseph Biggs, who told Fox and Friends yesterday Hastings was working on the biggest story yet, which we just heard, uh, was responsible for releasing an, an email Hastings wrote 15 hours before the car crash in which the journalist stated he was onto a big story and needed to go off the radar for a bit. Uh, Biggs tweeted the reason that he released the email was because Hastings' other friends and colleagues who received it were too scared to do so. Why, why would they be too scared? I mean, they have nothing to worry about. Megan Kelly said so. Uh, Biggs, who met Hastings when he was embedded as a, a journalist in Afghanistan in 2008, added, I won't let this man die in vain because I'm too scared of what will happen to me. If I sent that email to Mike, he wouldn't rest. He would fight. He also added that he drove like a grandma. And earlier this week, we pointed out that counterterrorism czar Richard Clark told the Huffington Post that the fatal car crash of Hastings Mercedes 250 Coupe was consistent with a car cyber attack. And we just showed you video of a car being driven around by itself via Google, of course. So if Google can take control of a car and they're a front for the CIA and NSA, what makes you think that they can't do the same to any car out there that probably was manufactured since 2005? Well, uh, at the end of the show today, in the final hour, we were able to get in touch with Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, and we're going to play the entire interview that he did with Alex today, just in case you missed it. If you didn't catch it on the Alex Jones Show, we're going to have it here. It's very informative, very interesting. You kind of get in the mindset of, of people when they're faced with this type of crisis, as they're starting to answer questions and ask questions and find out what's going on, it looks like Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs is going to launch his own investigation, which is the responsibility of citizen journalists. When you have people like Megyn Kelly out there who just say, we shouldn't question anything, cars just blow up and engines just get ejected 100 feet from where they roll off the road and kind of crash into a tree. Interestingly enough, somebody went to that site where they put a little memorial up and put a sign there in red that says, this is not an accident. And we'll show you that right after this interview. He, this man has a lot of courage. Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs uh, told Fox News' Megan Kelly that something didn't feel right. Uh, and he went on uh, in a RT article that we have on Infowars.com, Michael Hastings, wife vows to take down whoever did this. That's a quote. And uh, that's pretty bombshell. So he joins us now. And I think the best place to start was who Michael Hastings was, uh, how Staff Sergeant uh, you know, Biggs points out in the quotes here that, hey, if this happened to me, uh, Michael Hastings would be sticking up and investigating for me uh, and that everybody else is too scared to talk. Wow. Uh, so wherever you'd like to start, sir, I appreciate you coming on. Um, well, thanks for having me on. You bet. You've yeah. got the floor. I mean, tell us whatever you think you should get across to people. All right. Well, yeah, like you said, back in 2008, I was uh, deployed in uh, Coast Province in Afghanistan. And um, my commander uh, pulled me into his office, and he's like, well, we're going to have uh, two embedded uh, journalists, a photographer and, uh, well, a photographer and a journalist, and they're going to follow you around for the next week or so. The next week or so turned into almost about three months. And uh, you get to learn a lot about a person in one day of combat, let alone three months of being around them. He was, this was his first time in that kind of a situation, too, if I'm not mistaken, actually in Afghanistan doing that. And um, I, I was telling people, they were like, well, how was Michael? I was like, he was a fearless guy. I mean, I, I, I can remember one day in, uh, in particular 
right around the Pakistan border, we were being uh, ambushed. And uh, the, as the firefight's going over, I'm, I'm looking on, or look over to Michael, and he's looking up. He's like, is it over yet? He's like, is there more? And, like, he just looked excited. Like, he loved his job. And there wasn't a thing to scare him. So when this email comes to me, and, well, from 2008 on, him and I would talk all, all the time. He would ask me how I was doing, how, you know, I was talking about I was having nightmares. I was coming back. I was dealing with a lot of stuff with you know, some deaths of people over there, and it was just a hard time. And Mike was one of the guys that called me up from day, you know, time to time and check on me. So we built a pretty strong relationship in that sense. And from time to time, he would email me and tell me about stories he was working on and ask me what I thought about this, if he ever wrote about something that had to do with the military. I remember when the story broke on General McChrystal, he gave me a call, and he's like, man, I'm pretty scared, and, you know, I told him, I was like, you got every reason to be, brother. I was like, you just basically got a general level war fired. I'm pretty sure that doesn't sit too well with him right now. And uh, he went on to just share concerns about how, you know, he knew there was probably a chance that people would be looking into him, and I completely understand that. So last Monday morning, I wake up and I get this email from Mike, and usually the emails start off with, hey, brother, how's it going? You know, how's your family? How are you adjusting to civilian life because I'm out of the military now? This time it was just that. Everyone has the email because I released it, you know, saying that he believed the FBI was going to be investigating his colleagues and close friends. And it just didn't seem like something that he normally started the email off with. And when I read it, I just got this horrible feeling. I'm like, something's not right. I immediately called him, and I didn't get an answer. I was like, well, he's probably busy. So I go to school and try to brush it off. I told a few of my friends, like, you know, what do you think about this? I don't think something's right. You know, what if a friend sent you this email? How would you react? And a lot of them were like, man, that's scary stuff. I don't know what to do. So I go to a work event. I come home, and a friend calls me that night. She's like, hey, did you hear what happened to Mike? And I said, what do you mean? Yeah, he died in a crash. So I jumped on the, the turned on my TV, go on the Internet, and started looking up stuff and sort of watching these videos, and things just getting out of, you know, first email, then I'm reading that he called the WikiLeaks lawyer, which that I'm not sure about. I know he contacted a lawyer in recent days, but the whole WikiLeaks lawyer, I'm not sure about that. But then the crash, why was there an investigative reporter happened to be filming with his dash cam right as Michael drove by? I mean, who's out filming an empty street at 4 or something in the morning? I mean, all these alarms were going off, and my gut feeling from day one, from before it happened, I knew that something wasn't right. There's too many things that added up. And did Afghanistan thought, and all those years of combat, uh, did that hone your, your gut instinct? Yeah. I just, it, just, just anybody who knows someone, and they act out of, out of reason, out of like their normal behavior. You know, that should go off on it. That should send a red light off to anybody with, you know, that's had a close friend. Let's I talk mean, about, let's talk about, and then all the points you want to get into, but let's talk about why you decided to go public. You talked about the rest of the people that were sent the email as close friends and family like yourself are scared. And I know you've had a chance to talk to some of them. Describe how they're scared. And, and then there's the FBI denying he sent emails and stuff. Meanwhile, you know there was an email, so I guess that's why you released it. Uh, or, or correct me if I'm wrong, but let's get into uh, they're too scared to release an email that the FBI may raid us and they're talking to my friends and family. He wouldn't lie about that. And, and then meanwhile, I'm going off the radar. That's I'm going into hiding. I, wow. I, I mean, I hope I don't say I'm going into hiding. Look out. And then my car blows up. I mean, wow. Yeah. Um, I uh, I actually emailed some of the people that were on that, that he sent the names on the email to some of the people at BuzzFeed. And I said, hey, did you guys get that email? Now he's dead. Does anybody else think this weird? I got one response back. Yeah. And I go, yeah, question mark, question mark, question mark, that's it. And I waited five minutes. And, I mean, five minutes, you know, after your friend died, it seems like an eternity. And no one's saying anything. And I'm getting on the Internet, and I'm like, all right, somebody's got to come out and say something. Someone's got to – I can't be the only person that thinks this is just weird. So I asked my mom, I asked some people, and they're like, well, what – you know, I was like, what should I do? And everyone's like, man, that's some scary stuff to get into. And I just sat there for a minute and basically said, F it, I'm just going to do it. And Mike would 
do the same thing for me. He's not going to sit back and roll over. And, you know, I'm not a journalist. I'm not an investigator. I don't know what to, steps to take. All I know is I lost a friend. I'm pissed off. I want to find out what happened. And like I told his wife and some of his other friends, I'm going to do whatever the hell I got to do to figure this out. And at the end of the day, it turns out to be an accident. Then whatever. But right now, things don't add up to be that way. There's too many unanswered questions that need to be... There's too many just... Sure. Well, let me tell you when you're really going to wake up. I've been physically attacked by the shadow government. I've been threatened. I've seen amazing things. And, and, and so many times, that's why we've got to engage in investigative journalists and, and investigative journalism is so you'll find out for yourself how corrupt uh, things have gotten. I mean, look at the NSA being used against the Associated Press. Look at pro-life groups and tea parties uh, being harassed by the IRS. I mean, this government is out of control. It's been persecuting journalists and whistleblowers like no other president before them. Uh, and so it's not a stretch to say, hey, he's got the biggest story ever. Tell us about that. I mean, that's in the email. Oh, and, and he also reportedly told his wife that. But specifically, give us what info you have, uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Joseph Biggs here joining us uh, in an in-depth interview, not just sound bites on Fox News. I mean, for me, that's big, too, that I'm on this big story. The FBI is probably going to raid us. They're questioning people. I'm going into hiding. Boom. <sighs> yeah. Like I said, just that all that leading up, that email and that happening, and, and just that, there's too many. He was on edge. I mean, everyone that knew him was agreeing. The days leaving up, he was very on edge. And like you said, in the subject line, mentioning the NSA and the thought that the FBI was pushing his friends and associates, that alone makes the death soon afterwards. Let me say this. Let, let, let me say this while I have you. I'm begging you to get a hold of his wife, who you know. And I believe me, I've studied this. I can put her in contact with, with national security whistleblowers and people that have really uh, fought the system and won. Whatever she knows the investigation was, she's either got to tell the government, call the FBI, and say, I'm never going to talk about this. Or she's got to go public with all of it. And the safest thing is to go public immediately. Do you have any idea what it was dealing with the CIA that he said was the biggest thing he'd ever had? Um, that's all she knew. She didn't know anything else. She told me. She said Mike would not tell me anything. She said, you know, basically, from the sound of that, it would just be for her own protection. Yeah, of course. Well, I was supposed to at the, mem the memorial service, uh, what was it, uh, this past? Saturday, uh, a buddy of mine called me and said, hey, there's a plane leaving in two hours. Let's go up there to the service. So I hopped on and flew up to Vermont and stayed uh, at a hotel up there and then went and saw his uh, wife and family and all of them. And, um, you know, she pretty much came out and said that he wouldn't tell her anything at all. So I don't think you're going to get anything out of her in that sense. Well, that's good but for her. That's good for her because if he told any other colleagues anything... They're all under NSA surveillance, and if this was a hit, which my gut and all evidence says it was, there's going to be more deaths on this. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't be lying. I'd be lying to you if I wouldn't say I wasn't checking my car every damn day, I'll tell you that. Well, that's because you've lived in the real world. I feel sorry for the sheep out there that don't realize that you know, the, the, the press is under attack. Did you see him on the Young Turks shortly before he died, Mr. Hastings? Yeah, I was just, I was just watching that uh, last night. I mean, he said, we declare war on this corrupt system that's declared war on the press. The press has to stand up together. And they were afraid of that Colonel Travis type attitude. I'm telling you, they were scared of him. Well, Michael wrote one of his books and read it that he had been told, if we don't like what you write, we'll hunt you down and kill you. So, I mean, that's, you know, for, for him to say something like that, those are his own words. That's pretty, uh, pretty intense. I haven't read the books, but obviously I need to look them up. You know which one of his books? Uh, um, I can get back to you on that one. I mean, that'd be I'll, I'll search easy. it. Guys, search uh, Hastings' books. Uh, there's The Operators, and there's one other. I read part of The Operators online. Yeah, I'm, in the, I'm in The Operators. I don't think it's in that one. Yeah, no, I've been... L listen, listen. <laughs> I just, uh, it's, people that haven't gone through this just don't know. I mean, I've had him call up. Tell me what I was talking about on the phone just so I know who it is and then threaten me. I mean, this country is just in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I agree. Uh, listen. Uh, With the interview 
yesterday though with uh with Megan Kelly. I was pretty uh pretty upset because um I was asked that you know, some topics I wanted to go over and as soon as I got there it was just kind of bing bang boom. She kind of didn't really give me a chance to, you know, discuss them. Well, sir, stuff you've got that chance now. You've got what are the points you want to make here? Well, you know, I like I said, I'm no journalist and I don't know how to go about all this stuff, but I mean I wrote I reached out to Mercedes Benz and wrote an email, and I don't know how often they're able to get something like this, but, I mean, one of the things that you need to find out is how often in Rex's Mercedes, and on top of this, let's remember Mercedes is one of the safest types of cars there is, especially nowadays, that an engine, you know, comes out. And looking at the fire from that, I've been blown up in Iraq and Afghanistan and completely engulfed in flames, but it never looked that bright. I mean, it never looked that big. And I can tell you from first-hand experience from surviving, you know, IED explosions, it, it was never at that magnitude that that car just, you know, spontaneously, you know, just explodes from hitting a tree. Yeah, I've been told it looks like five to eight pounds of plastic explosive probably uh, underneath the car right where he was sitting or in the dashboard. Uh, and it, it, and they debate whether it was 30 yards up to 50 yards or longer that it shot this... I've heard up to 100, and you know, and another thing is that I want to say that they saw sparks before the impact, and then another person inside their house said that they it sounded like a bomb going off. So you know, cars hitting trees don't sound like bombs going off. Well, plus I I've seen the photos, Sergeant Staff Sergeant. It, it looks like it came to rest up against a tree. The witnesses said it blew up in the street and jackknifed, and then and then basically then was thrown into a tree. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I think as well. I, I was talking with my buddies earlier. The way the engine's lying, it had to have come out before even being near that tree. I mean, the car's not going to hit a tree, and then the engine, it would have been some kind of mark where the engine had, like, ricocheted off the tree and gone in some direction. Instead, it, you know, in the same direction of travel before this, you know. Yeah, that's right. The car, according to, like, three witnesses, blows up in the street. The engine flies out the front down the road. Then it comes to rest up against a tree. If it, if it hit on the side and the engine broke off, which, uh, according to engineers, they say, they're so bolted to that frame, it'd be incredibly hard to even break it loose. It would have shot through the fence into the person's house, not the opposite direction down the road. Yeah. Well, we definitely need an independent uh, expert investigation. And I'd love to try to get a uh, fund to purchase the wreck and have it examined by someone. That'd be fantastic on all ends. Because I really don't trust the LAPD to be making some sound decisions on something like that. I mean, how do you rule out foul play as a matter of hours? Yeah, absolutely, sir. And then Breitbart, they announced he died of a heart attack 45 minutes after he was at the hospital. That That's never done. The coroner wasn't even there. And then the guy that did the coroner examination died of poisoning uh, a month later. I mean, this is, come on, folks, this this is getting insane. And, uh, now, now, expanding on this, uh, when did you talk to his wife? I mean, was it at the funeral or via email? Uh, was it at the memorial or, or uh, via email where she said that I'm going to take down whoever did this? She, uh, when we were at the service, she pulled me aside and talked to me, and she was like, you know, thanks for having, you know, basically the courage to do this and kind of help out. And she's like, you know, I'm definitely... You know, she's she basically the way she says she's like, I'm gonna do what I can to look into this with everything I got. And you know, she when she did it, she put her hand on me and she just gave me this look. And I mean, she looked like a pit bull. You know, like she is protecting the person she loves more than anything, and she's pissed off. And it was the hardest thing for me to see, just because you could see how bad she was torn up. And it was just, it was a horrible. Just to see that, you know, that man was loved by so many people. He was a great guy. A lot of people hated him when that story with McChrystal broke. They hated him. But I tell you right now, for the soldiers, I got much respect for that man. I respected the hell out of him. He spoke the truth, and he wasn't afraid to tell anybody that. And if they lied, he'd call them out. You know, why all of a sudden is it wrong to be truthful and not stick up for sure. what's right? There was a gentleman went by the name Colonel Six out of Dallas, a, 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 a African American member of the military, and he would send me all this great info and said McChrystal's going to go down soon and stuff. And then about six months later, he did. And then Colonel Six said, "I've got intel I'm going to give you." This is on record. And then it was in the news the next week. He committed suicide in Fort Worth. 
And it turned out he was everybody he said he was. Colonel Six was his nickname. Uh, and people can look up the guy's full name and everything, but it's just so many people. And I'm not trying to scare people for the globalist. I want people to understand, though, you've had a lot of military investigators killed that investigate missing money. You know, there's so many examples of this, and we need to stand for the free press in the memory of Michael Hastings. And I'll say this, I didn't really know who he, I mean, I knew who he was, but I didn't know if, if I, you know, really respected him totally or not, because I wasn't sure until I saw interviews he did about the NSA and saying, we've got to come together, you know, the government's coming after us, they're thugs, this is illegal, we've got to organize, you know, for, for American freedom. It was so powerful, and then I saw other interviews, and it seemed in the weeks, because then I went back and watched more, I went and watched interviews from a year ago, six months ago, they weren't the same. Two weeks before he died, he was doing interviews and was energized with, like, he discovered incredibly bad things. And, 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 I mean, did you notice a change in him in those videos? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, when I was watching last night, I could definitely see a, a fire under him. He was definitely uh, pretty motivated. Wouldn't you like to know what he discovered? I mean, oh, yeah, I do. I mean, I, we've just got to, like I said, slow and steady wins the race. This is something that's not going to be figured out immediately, but I've just got to have patience. And I've reached out to people via Twitter, and a lot of people have, really come forward and been willing to help me. I got a guy that lives in L.A. who's pretty much the expert with the, the FOIAs. He's already sent one to the FBI, and the FBI has already sent back the letter, and I, he sent me a copy saying that they've received it, and we'll be looking into it. Well, listen, all you've got to do is this. You've got to start a defense fund uh, on on one of the crowdsourcing sites or or just set up a... a, a, a uh, PayPal or something to get the basic money to go out there for like a month. You get you get his wife to sign a uh, power of attorney to let you get the car. Now, now, here's the deal. I shouldn't even be announcing this on air. They will try to scrub the car. But if you get there and it's had chemicals, extra chemicals sprayed, it's been scrubbed, still you'll be able to find explosive residue. You've got to get it to independent forensic people. But here's the thing. I got to warn you. Just like they killed the coroner of Breitbart. I believe this was a car bombing. Understand, you've been in combat, so you're not a wimp. I, I admire you and I admire Mr. Hastings. I don't know what I would do in this situation. You, they will probably try to off whoever goes to try to do samples of that car. I'm telling you, this is serious business. Just like TWA Flight 800, reporters snuck in and got the explosive residue that it was a U.S. Air Force continuous rod warhead. I had the top general on who blew the whistle, General Parton as well. They arrested the reporters and put them in jail for a long time for breaking into the hangar. So I'm just telling you, this isn't a game. And I know you know that. Yeah, and like I said before, I'm not making any kind of, I believe this is what really happened right now. Like I said, based off facts, things don't add up right now. So whether he be murdered or it was an accident, I can't rule out the worst that would be him being murdered. I can't rule that out because right now there's no factual proof to disprove that. So... You'd have to be murdered. insane to ignore all the things that happened, all the ingredients. Well, all there's going to be so many people out there. Most people, like you said, are, they don't, they just read their news and drink their coffee and go to work and they're happy and that, that's all there is. You know, and they go on about it and come back to their homes or probably being at the white picket fences and everything's all lollygags and happy and all that stuff. But they don't realize that what people go through to really stick up for this country and things like that. And there's a lot of people out there as well that are willing to do whatever they have to do to keep some of their secrets down. So. Absolutely. Well, I can only respect your incredible courage, sir. And I'd like to continue to get you on as things unfold. And uh, if you need any help investigating this, I'm, if, if the family wants me to, I'm willing to go to Los Angeles. I mean, I'm committed to this. And, I, and, and, I, and if they kill me, I want people to investigate what happened to Alex Jones, just like you're doing for your buddy. It, uh, you know, I believe that uh, Mr. Hastings uh, is, uh, you know, directly uh, in heaven because God loves uh, people that have courage and God hates cowards. Uh, speaking, if you could talk to Michael right now, Staff Sergeant uh, Biggs, what would you say to him? That uh, he was, it was amazing to see the amount of people that he affected through his life. I just hope that one day that I'm able to have that much of an impact on people's lives as he did.
He was loved by many. He was a fearless man. He was one of the greatest people I've known. And I have unwavering respect for this guy. And like I told his friends and family, I'm not going to sleep on this. I'm committed. And he should know that we're not going to just sit back and roll over. Because I know if the roles are reversed, he'd do the same thing for me. Well, Pat Gelman's brother pushed, and they found out he was murdered. Yeah. We've got about a... Well, God bless you, man. I really respect you. And that's why I say our military is such great people. Even if these wars, many of them are corrupt and wrong, the people that are doing it, uh, you know, got in for the right reasons and have just done things that the average public has no idea how hard it is. Uh, and, and, and Mr. Hastings was in a war for freedom in this country, and he said that. And, and I just want to commend you uh, for what you're doing, uh, Staff Sergeant. we got about a minute left. Anything else you'd like to add? Anybody has any kind of information or anything like that? I just, you know, they can contact you and you guys can get a hold of me and you can find me on Twitter because everyone has been able to do it recently. Give uh, us your actual I'll, Twitter account. Um, at R A M B O B I G G S at Rambo Big. So obviously, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs is concerned enough a to fly to the funeral and memorial of his fallen friend and talk with his wife, but also to even possibly launch his own investigation. He's strongly considering it. We'll see where that leads him. But here I want to show you this picture, and this is off of patdollard.com. He posted this picture right there. This was not an accident. And there it is written in red at the site of where his car was reportedly going over 100 miles an hour. Uh, and flew into this tree. The tree, of course, didn't fall, and the engine was then ejected because, you know, every Mercedes has its own uh, engine ejection switch. When you're about to hit a crisis or something, you eject the engine 100 feet from your car. That's the way it works, people. Don't you know that? Don't you know anything about cars these days? Very interesting, and this is obviously scratching the surface of what's going to be another big thing. Interestingly enough, also, there were two detectives uh, that had an assassination hit on them. Uh, that j this is just coming out. I read it in Huffington Post and also saw it on another website, Daily Mail Online, where uh, two detectives coming back in from work in the early morning hours were ambushed by a gunman. Uh, they returned fire. They weren't seriously injured. Uh, interestingly enough, they didn't find anybody. They didn't find any. They detained a few people, but determined that they weren't the suspects. So were these two detectives working on this case? Who knows? There's the Huffington Post right there. LAPD detectives shot while returning to police station. Three people detained. I think later it says that they, they released those people in the search. They, of course, when, when their own gets shot, they cordon off 25 block areas with tanks and, and people running around with automatic weapons, which is the kind of response you would expect from the LAPD. So is this a case of they're trying to cover up and, and they're trying to silence the investigators? Maybe they really weren't trying to kill them. Maybe they're just trying to scare him to shut him up. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland 
and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing the same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing.